Hi, and welcome to High School Physics Explained. My name is Paul. I'm Tom. I'm Simon. And today we're going to be looking at JJ Thompson's well-known experiment where he discovered the electron. I already have a video on JJ Thompson's experiment, and I encourage you to watch this. The focus here is to really look at a really great experiment to show one aspect of his experiment. So you should know that JJ Thompson deflected an electron beam with both a magnetic field and an electric field and therefore determine the velocity. That's not this part of the experiment. This part of the experiment takes the second step, which is looking at deflecting it in using a magnetic field and thus determining the charge to mass ratio. And here we have a fantastic demonstration that probably most schools don't have to demonstrate that aspect. And I'm going to let Tom introduce that. So this experiment is a, is a really nice experiment to show the charge to mass ratio of an electron. Uh, back in the day, we, we understood that atoms, coming from the word unbreakable, didn't have anything else in them, right? But now we've started to think about, well, back in the J.J. Thompson's day, we've started to think about atoms having other things in them, right? Subatomic particles, mm. right? But we didn't really know how they worked. We couldn't really measure their mass. But what we could do is figure out some other properties like charge to mass ratio, that is, the, the ratio of their charge and their mass, which tells us a little bit about them. Mm. And this is an experiment that shows the charge to mass ratio of an electron. So how does it work? So the setup is I've got a cathode ray bulb here, cathode ray tube, very much like the one in a television, but just a little bit more uh, specific. And uh, in there, it's being accelerated with a lot of voltage from the power pack uh, this way. And you can see the, the green or blue beam coming out of that cathode ray in that direction. Mm. And there's no magnetic field here, so this is just going straight out. And we can measure the energy of that by how much voltage we're giving it. These coils around here is a Helmholtz coil set up in a specific way such that there's a uniform magnetic field through the center of here. Uh, one of Helmholtz's, or Helmholtz's contributions was this Helmholtz coil setup where you can have uniform magnetic field and that's very important. Mm -hmm. If we change the current going through these wires, we can change the magnetic field in that bulb and therefore change the direction of the cathode ray. I'll show you. Cool. So just going to bend it around. Close up, zoomy zoom. If I have a larger current, the cathode ray beam will turn all the way around into a circle, essentially. If I have less current, up to zero, it goes straight. Mm. So let's go all the way over here so where our cathode ray beam is in a circle. Now we know a lot about circles mathematically. Mm. We also know the voltage, the energy that we're giving the electrons, and now we know the current that's going through here. With a, a little bit of fancy math, we can manipulate the things that we know about voltage, the things that we know about current, to get an expression for charge to mass ratio of an electron. And that's how we did it. Fantastic. Okay, um, yeah look, I particularly love this piece of kits. I mean, this beautiful Helmholtz coil, as uh, Tom was saying, got quite thick copper wire here. And as Tom was saying, we've got the current going through, which is going to determine the magnetic field strength. Now, that is you know, the force on a charge in the magnetic field acts towards the center. So that provides the centripetal force to make it move in the circle. So as Tom was saying, the bigger the current, it's going to be the bigger the force on the charge in the magnetic field, which is going to be a bigger centripetal force, so we can actually get tighter circles. For students, if you want to try this at home, we do actually have a simulation that was developed here at the University of Sydney. In fact, back in about 2006, 2008, Derek Muller of Veritasium fame, uh, he ran a program and we desi designed a simulation to run Thompson's experiments. So we'll put the URL for that in the, uh, the video notes yep. and you can actually have a go at manipulating the magnetic field strength manipulating the uh, parallel plates for the electric fields, which is the other part of Thompson's experiments uh, from uh, Paul's earlier video, and you can actually have a go at determining the charge to mass ratio. Fantastic. Well, I hope that has helped you understand JJ Thompson's work a little bit better. I encourage you to check the links down below and certainly think about also of getting yourself involved with, let's say, the Kickstart program here at Sydney Univers University of Sydney. Uh, if you want to do some of these experiments with your students here at university. Thanks for watching. My name is Paul. I'm Tom. I'm Simon. Take care. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. Please remember, like, share and subscribe. And by the way, drop a comment down below if the video particularly has been useful. And finally, consider supporting me via Patreon. 
The idea is to develop resources and equipment to continue to teach physics at a high school level. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.